my GPS and collect the street data or trace it from the imagery and then like build the base map. But like now it's like most places like here in Hong Kong have all the streets, so it's like you have a base already to go on. So then you could just uh, like sorry. Yeah. come in, come in. Sorry. Come in. So um, and now and now there's uh, imagery available that you use base <coughs> from. So you could just uh, trace like buildings or things or use that as a guidance of uh, uh, without even going outside in the heat. If it's, uh, you don't want to get high. So just stay inside and do this with the imagery based on okay, like I remember what's there, I know this is my neighborhood, I know what's around here, so I can add data. Or if I'm not sure or it's nice outside, I want to go walk around. You can print out uh, the map on paper or just like like a notebook or like something, take some notes or some pictures and then collect information and then come back and put that in. Or um, if you're going out in like the woods where uh, like it's all uh, covered by like trees and the uh, imagery, you can't really see like the hiking trails and stuff like that. And that's where uh, like GPS is like important. Or where there's like some places there, they're, they're, like, there's not like good imagery. So, GPS is like, important for that. Go back to my computer, or in some cases there are now like mobile phone apps, and so you can add, just like add the data while you're outside and, and and skip step number three or do that combine, and then within like minutes the changes will appear on the map, and and so that's cool. And then you can use the data so. Like, if you want to make a map for Wikipedia or whatever you want to do, or you want to put it on, like, like well, like, I don't know, you know, like, I'm here in Hong Kong, so, for long enough that I bought a SIM card, but if I was, like, lazy, I didn't want to buy a SIM card, but, so I don't have, like, data in that case, and then I don't want to get lost, so I want to have, like, maps that, like, don't require, like, like data connection, offline maps. So you can download uh, like, uh, like specific areas of OpenStreetMap and then have that like while you're traveling, and then it's like you don't have to worry about getting lost. And already talked a bit about like the sources. So uh, GPS is the like obvious one and one of the, like, the first uh, sources that were used, and then. I'm not sure exactly when, but it was like around 2008 or so that uh, one of the OSM uh, folks uh, named Mikkel, like he uh, knew people at Yahoo, and uh, so um, they have uh, or had satellite imagery like with their maps, and they, they decided or agreed that okay, like, open street map users could trace from the imagery, and it's. It's a derived thing, but like that was okay. Like, and they so they gave permission that you could uh, trace. And as well, if you're lucky, uh, at that point, like to say, be in a place like the United States where the government data from the federal government is public domain. So there's like a lot of imagery uh, to trace from. That that's okay, but it's uh, because of the license, you can't just copy from anything. Um, you can't copy from Google Maps, that's like, no. Um, but anything that's public domain, old enough, uh, historic, uh, or, or we have permission. And now, in the past like couple years, we got permission from uh, Microsoft to uh, use the imagery that's in Bing. And every once in a while, like, they'll go out and like, like, even ask us, oh, like, what areas like, do we want to add in like, for like, high-quality imagery? And, like, Sometimes like that can happen, and uh, in cases of uh, like 2010 and January 2010, there was like a big earthquake in Haiti. So uh, like, at that time, Haiti had no good maps at all. Like the governments, you know, like the U.S. government had no good maps. Uh, but uh, it was like some of the the satellite imagery companies. Things like uh, it was like Digital Globe and some of the other ones, and even Google cooperated with us in that time. 
uh, to allow us to trace from the imagery. So it had like details like where all the camps were, so we traced like where like the people were and where like buildings were damaged and and the governments and the rescue organizations used the data uh, like in their work. And so in some cases, exceptions like that can be made where like we'll get permission to use uh, like commercial imagery. Then you can use the uh, like notes, pen and paper, Bowtech, easy technology, and you can use uh, mobile, your mobile device to collect data. And, uh, so this is an Haiti GPS for, for like after after people collected the data, like people went down there to I mean, it was like fun to train people and to um, just to like um, like verify and like improve upon like what we could see from the imagery. <coughs> and so I can do a demo of this later, but this is kind of how it works. So this is a one of the OSM advanced editors called Jossum, so you can upload your uh, GPS trace and then you can like download the OSM data like to edit and this would be like an extra layer so then you would trace from this and then add a, this to OpenStreetMap and upload it. And so you're allowed to trace like this is from uh, this is from Bing, so it's okay to use that. Trace, you can trace buildings and stuff like that, which are tend to be easier to do from the imagery. Like, like it depends. Oh, um, I think I forgot earlier when I talked about data. It's not just imagery, but in some cases, like, like, like I'm orig originally from Washington D.C. or like from what with the D.C. chapter, and uh, like our <coughs> street map group. Uh, we had like good relations with the city government and they're all uh, into open data like like for a few years now so they had have um, like just really detailed like data about like the buildings or the streets or parks or like other things or like all the liquor license locations which tell you where all the bars are so uh, we were able to get some of that data with their permission uh, like acceptable to uh, add it to OpenStreetMap and. Like funny thing was like when I was in a university, it's like one of the or the company that I worked for as an intern it was like like one of our jobs or like projects was to map all the all of the buildings. So it was from like it was from like high quality imagery and it's like so I did this during college and I'm like, I don't want to do this again, like repeat what I did to add it to a street map. I just wanna take like what we did and and so that just saved us time, and then, and then I could use like my time to collect things that the government does not have, or uh, like improve upon the data, or or collect data for other areas. <coughs> so, uh, so you can think about um, working with like government agencies that have data and they're willing to provide it, and then like like as a as a like collaboration or collective effort. Uh, Make OpenStreetMap better, and, and like this helps them too. And so uh, yes, yeah, don't copy from Google Maps. <laughs> like, uh, it's like complicated, and I don't know if uh, Lewis is here or uh, the, the uh, one of the new uh, legal uh, or lawyers for the foundation. Like he's like looking into all the legal issues about the license, but. Um, as you know, Wikipedia is based in, or the servers are in uh, Ash Ashburn, Virginia, in the U.S. So it's under Wikipedia works under the American law, where things like uh, facts, coordinates, stuff like that, cannot be copyrighted. It's not creative at all, and so it's fine, like for Wikipedians to copy from Google Maps and put that into Wikipedia or into Wik. Like, I don't know, under Wikidata, I don't know that, that it's not totally clear that's okay, but under American law, like, like that's, I guess, generally thought of as, like, okay. Uh, but OpenStreetMap was started in the UK, so under British and European law, where there's a such thing as, like, database rights. So, um, like, 
thing that uh, just doesn't exist in like the, in the U.S. But it's like they're concerned about, or we're concerned about, like like this Creative Commons thing that like, like the, did not cover data very well, and so uh, they came up or worked with the Open Knowledge Foundation to come up with the Open Database License that covers data. And so it's like still similar where it's share light and they want attribution, but like the exact details of uh, like it's still like a bit new and like there's still some questions. But like one thing that's for sure the OpenStreetMap community cares about, like database rights, which means systematically as a community going around and copying from Google Maps is like no, don't do that. And that also means, because Wikipedians have done that, that means that they can like, copy stuff from Wikipedia to OpenStreetMap. But, um, like, it's okay, like, in some, uh, like, like, a little bit complicated, but, like, there are ways that are okay to use uh, OpenStreetMap in Wikipedia. Um, it's a little bit complicated, but... Lewis is looking at it more like just to help, help us understand like all this stuff be better, but don't copy from Google Maps, but you can copy from uh, the imagery from Bing or any other sources that are like public domain. That's cool. And so we already talked about that. We could talk all day about license. Uh, um, so uh, if you want to go outside and collect notes, have uh, it's uh, later during the meetup time if anyone like is like super interested in this and likes to go outside uh, I have a um, th there's a site called Field Papers there um, it's th there, there's a previous site to this called Walking Papers that you may have heard of but the person behind that he um, revised and came up with a new site called Field Papers, which is better. And so the idea is you can uh, choose like an area and then it, like, I can decide okay, like, how many pieces do I want to cut this area into like a cake. So I want it into like eight pieces, so each one I have a second uh, later or like see it, but just uh, has a small piece of, of the map that has enough space that I can write down stuff and then it is possible as a QR code so it is possible to have this uploaded and then, then uh, there are plugins for JOSM where it will like overlay this into the, the editor and then you can uh, uh, like, like work with it that way but usually uh, like, I don't bother with that like, just if I like notes, then like that's good enough for for me to like enter the data. But and so like when a place has been mapped, like to, to the like the, like this detail, like for Hong Kong, that has the streets, some of the buildings that like and that the buildings are so tall, like stuff like GPS um, is a like actually has some problems. So like something like walking. Is much, or field papers is much better. And, and so go walk around and then come back and they put the data in. And then this is a, just one of the apps for Android called OSIN Tracker that. <coughs> I think there are dozens of apps for street map and they're all like have their pros and cons and, and so like this one is good for um, it collects GPS tracks and you can mark uh, like points as you're walking and then you can view it like over like the existing map and uh, so collect GPS tracks with this. Um, and, uh, yeah? Can I ask a question? I mean in Hong Kong GPS is a bit yeah, it's a bit bad. I would not use it except for maybe on the mountains. It might be fine. So what I couldn't didn't quite understand with, with the, the field map, where they walk around with the paper, what are they supposed to do when they walk around? Just take notes, like know like what restaurants are where. Okay, like okay. it's it's I mean 
mean like it just shows you like where the buildings are. So it's not going to be like like the the maybe like engineering uh, level of accuracy, but it's going to be good enough for like like ninety nine percent. Or maybe we can correct the tape. Yes, the, the, yes, the, the, we can. We can do that. Maybe they, they're actually it's it's a circle, but it's it's draw a square. Okay, so we can correct that. Yes, yes, you can do that. So uh, of the apps, like I have Android, so I know that better. But there's one called Pushpin that's for iOS that like I've heard is like boom and like pretty good. Uh, OSM and it is one that was originally meant for okay, like I want to fly maps when I'm traveling, but it does have uh, some, like, if you poke around in the menus, there's some, like, advanced uh, features that allow you to add, like, a point or something. And then there is one called the Spooky, which is also, like, it's not, like, really, like, a perfect thing, but it, like, it can also do editing. And then you can go to the OpenStreetMap wiki, and there's, like, a huge uh, list of uh, apps and, and which, what each one is capable of. You can put GPS tracks, or, or if they're, if they're, I don't know, some of them cost money, or, or what. So that's enough about like the background. I can show you about like, how to edit now. And, and like, it's different than OpenStreetMap is like a bit different than Wikipedia in the sense that. Um, has a thing called OAuth, which Wikipedia is getting soon. It means it allows like third-party apps to like just to be able to connect your account like with those apps and give them permission that like you can edit with them. So and, like all the editing is done through the API, like, pretty much like it is. Uh, so it's like it's very much in a way that makes it easier for third parties to come up with like different apps for uh, for um, for just different use cases. And I forgot um, when I listed the mobile apps, there's one of my favorite apps out there. It's called Keypad Mapper, and that one is uh, like because I'm now living in Berlin, which is like quite like, very well mapped. But things like street addresses, there's still a lot that are missing. So if I just want to walk around and like don't want the papers. Uh, it's just for a specific purpose mapping to collect addresses. So I'm walking along and I can mark uh, like 30 on the left, 32 on the right, or just that'll mark like quick and easy to mark the addresses. And I can speak, uh, take notes with sound, and, and, and you can do things like that. But it's just for a specific task, and and in that way, it's like simple, but like does it does that well. Versus some of these other apps, like trying to do everything, like a lot, trying to allow you to edit the polygons, which is really hard to do on the phone. And some of them, like, try to do everything, and it's kind of not so great. Uh, so it's like. So what's uh, the the? It's an app on Android. Or yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's for iOS also, but it's for Android. So it's great for just mapping mapping addresses or like simple stuff. And you can also take this, but this. So just take a look on the wiki and see like what you want to do. Or, like if you want to go hiking, maybe like bad map is not for you, but another one is for you. And, and so like that's different from Wikipedia, which for the longest time had just like that one like edit page, ugly media wiki code. Very ugly, and then it's like the API, like for for media wiki, it just kind of takes like I don't know, I'm going through the edit page thing. Like now we have the visual editor and are coming out with OAuth, so like stuff like what OSM has done will be more possible with the cooking in soon. But so like for the longest time, or like I'm not sure which one came first. I think maybe Jason. Um, but like Potlatch is like an editor that's been around for years, and that one is uh, written in Flash. So if you like, if you're like anti-Flash, or if you're using an iPad or something, like it's it's. I mean it's. I mean it's done well. Like it was nice, but it's like has some like usability. I don't know. It's just not not like. It's a nice. Yeah. Good question. 
Uh, is there a way of looking where these edits come from as a function of yes, which Yes, there is. Yep. There is. And I, I, like, I, I know in the data, like, yes, so you can see um, like the number of edits I have with uh, which editor. Okay. So is that in order? No, it's, it's in order of, well, like, it's in no particular order. It's actually in, in historic data because I need the most recent pot clutch in between and Jocelyn came first, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so pot clutch is the one that, like, I'm not sure, like, I could have... Before I did, pot clutch got something about 60, 70 percent. Yeah, it's going to be easier if I go to... It was from minorities. So here I just, like, search for her, where I want to map. The internet is good or not today. I have to reload this. Because the projector does good things to my computer, so I have to reload the app. Right, I can show you each editor and what they do. Like, it's easier than looking at a PowerPoint or slides. This area over here, like I'm staying at like hotel, and the area between uh, the hotel and here, there are like a whole bunch of shops, and around like this square, there are a lot of shops, and they're just not on the street map. And um, I'm not going to edit them now, so I can save them like for walking around, but. <coughs> so you have a choice, either click on uh, like this arrow. And it gives you a choice, so um, I can start with potlatch, just to show you what it's like. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it does more than, like, I'm not sure if it's called, the uh, one called ID, I'm not sure. It's brand new. Yeah. I'm not sure if whether you're supposed to say ID or ID. <laughs> I don't know, but ID is, uh, it's, like, it's like the visual editor, it's very similar where it's like, it's like great for like simple edits, but like if you want to do a little bit more advanced like templates or whatever, complicated wiki markup or whatever the equivalent is for OpenStreetMap, the like potlatch can do a little bit more and then if you want to do like more than that, then like you want Jocelyn. It's like editing, I mean it's powerful, but this is not great on a small screen. So you, need, you can give it a tell it what like background to use. So I want like just to see like the map the way it is now, or I want like Bing, or I want like I can show you the GPS track so it can show them uh, like just mine, or if I want to see like everyone's. <coughs> you can see some of them are a little rough because of all the buildings, but there are a lot of GPS tracks. And like helps stuff, so that's potlatch. And then you can choose the ID one, which is the ID one is written with the JavaScript and it uses a, like some like I think it uses some Node.js in the background or something, but it, uh, it uses JavaScript. So this will work on the iPad with some limitations that it's still not like, like I don't know, it's not like really like, like intended for a mobile yet, but it's something that will like probably be made better like soon. So like it's so 
I would stick with the mobile app, you know, like the iPad or something. But like at least you can like load this versus on a flash. And then say so like So just at a, at a basic level, the can see that as a point. So I want to add a like, like over here somewhere. There's a Starbucks. So I want to add a, a Starbucks. So like soda, the cafe. So it's hard to see, but it also tells you, like, he's, like, edited it in this area. So, like, you know, like, okay, I'm, like, confused. Or, like, I have a question. Like, I want to contact someone. Like, you might have an idea, like, someone who can help you. How big is the area? Is your computer five? Actually, that's a good question. It's just this area, I think, where these tiles, it's, it's just this general area. Like, it's um, bigger, but I mean, it's... The question that I had about this about this thing here is that um, I was um, doing some mapping in Lagos yeah. and when I was looking for contributors who'd been contributing there, I found lots and lots of edits um, which were over enormous areas, which covered yeah, that, huge that's areas. True. And there was, I finally found a web tool, I think it was called Who Did It or something, Who Done It or Who Did It, which um, shows you exactly in that area who's been editing. So I'm, I'd be interested to know whether this contribution is by, by just rectangle or whether it's... Um, I'm not totally sure. Well. I'm trying to make it bigger. So, so Um, yes, but the problem is that the editing history shows you everyone who's edited, because the, uh, everyone's edits, if, if someone edits a point here and a point there, and you look for edit history in the middle, then you get that edit as well. And so there are certain tools which will show you the edits which actually um, edited things in the area. Ah, so it's hard to find a change set. Exactly. Yes, if you don't use the right tools. So that's why I was curious to know whether this shows you. So what is, so what is this? Is that, so what is the, what's the result? Oh, so oh, you've been you've been fixing things. Yeah, I made it bigger. So I'm not exactly sure, like, but approximately there's a Starbucks over there. So then I can uh, uh, like save it. Uh, and they, they they want to make this more social, so I can like. It's well, like even on Potlatch, where there used to be a thing for uh, like Potlatch and Facebook, where I could like, share and like some people are, like I don't know, people always like the edits or like comment on them, but we should tweet about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, is there any resistance in the uh, open street map community against this uh, uh, sharing functionality? No, I don't think so. No, no more, more. You can even uh, like I'm not going to. Log in with Google, like then, then you can do that, and like I don't see, like I mean I'm not sure about Facebook, they have open ID, but like if they did, then it's like, I mean if you can log in with AOL, then I don't see like Facebook, you know, probably. I, I think some of those are actually OAuth, even though it says open ID. I'm not sure. I think they're open ID, but. Uh, Proxying, so and it's going through HTTPS, so like you can't snoop. <laughs> 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 Alright, so anyway, like so I like did that. You can also 
out to add vines and you can add vine guides. And so it's like rather simple, but like you know, something simple like adding a restaurant or a Starbucks. It's like you don't need a, like it's like a visual editor or like whatever. This will like do for most people. Uh, it's Does it do relations? Yeah. Does it do relations? It does. No. This the oh, and you can do uh, like also choose uh, like your background. You can choose um, get some help. It also has a thing where you can uh, it'll like find your location. And we are here. Just using the browser geolocation, it can like like locate you. And if you make a mistake, you can undo it before you save it. So if like you're really addicted to it in street map or you you have a GPS traces that you want to upload or whatever and you're like okay like, like visual editor I can't do this like then Jasmine can do everything. But it takes a little bit more time to learn it, but once you learn it it's like you'll love it. month or so ago, I was like in the, uh, visiting in the U.S. and it was, a uh, I went for hiking in, in the mountains, like, of Western Maryland. And so in this case, it's like, oh, the, the, you can look at the imagery and see just like how difficult it would be in a trace room, the imagery. And if you go into your, I, I can do this for a second, your preferences and, and like if uh, you decide, uh, okay, like which, which of the three editors you like, and you can set it as your uh, under a setting. Set it as your uh, default. So then you can just click edit. For Jossum, or it's jossum.streetmap.de. This Jossum was uh, created originally by like, the Germans. So, uh, so. And you have a choice of downloading the tested version, or um, you can download the uh, latest development version. And it was just like yesterday or the past few days, someone, like one of the developers, broke something. That makes a uh, uh, street map incompatible with the tested version. So, like, you want the latest version that has like thing fixed. So, uh, so I downloaded a, a new copy of Jossum today, yeah. and the 
It's like, this works on Windows, uh, Linux, uh, Mac, whatever, uh, and there are instructions on, on the site and on the OpenStreetMap wiki uh, for like how to do this. For, um, for Mac, sometimes I end up doing like so much editing that I run out of memory on my computer. Uh, so there's a way. Like, this is on the help page, so you don't have to write this down, but there's a way to give it, like, more memory, so, like, then I, if I do it this way, then I have a problem. It's written in Java. Awesome. Java can speak that editor.
because you have experience with edits, and I know a lot of people here do. What kind of metadata is stored in an edit? Uh, how does the OSINT community treat anonymous edits? What is an anonymous edit? Is it really anonymous? Uh, I mean, it's, well, it's the thing that's similar, or it's like maybe, like, I don't know, different than Wikipedia. Like, in Wikipedia, there's like, like the notion that, that, that you yes. can be an anonymous and not log in, but then it records your IP address, so you're not anonymous. But if you make an account, then it's like, then it's like hides your information and, and it gets like thrown away. And same with like OpenStreetMap, there is no like logged out editing. You have to have an account. And like, I mean, I'm sure it's like treated the same way as like Wikipedia, where it's like, like they're not gonna like share share your information. But <coughs> can I make multiple accounts with the same email address? Um, because if I, I'm, I'm probably the only person in my town who is yeah. going to be doing this. Yeah. Um, uh, no, but if you are using Gmail, you can add, you know, uh, your your name plus something. Yeah. And you can do hundreds of aliases yeah. okay. for your Gmail. Yeah. You yeah. can also use Melinator or something. One the time used um, mail address, so it's no okay. problem. Okay, Do you know if uh, <coughs> if OpenStreetMap blocks tour editing? I know Wikipedia does. I'm not sure. Because that would be an approach to it. The, the biggest problem is what you said earlier that if you're the only person yeah. likely to be doing it in the city, then it doesn't oh, matter. A bullseye on my <laughs> it doesn't matter like how many layers of proxies you have. You're, you're still like the white guy walking around with his phone and napping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the tour may still help to some degree. Well, obviously, I mean, you don't spend a lot of time in China without VPN. So collect data, go to the VPN, drop the data. Yeah. That's step one. But I'm still wondering if, there, if there's additional protections I can take. Because it literally, I will probably be the only person. Yeah, like I'm just not sure, but it's, it's because I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's like there. It's basically a compost box system to stay at home or somewhere. And it's with things like Jossum, you can do it like offline, and then it's like, I don't know when you're not, like, I don't know, like, how long you're going to be there, but it's like if you're just visiting or whatever, like, I don't know if they snoop in your computer, but like, you could do this offline and then like, upload it later from somewhere else. Do you drive a car? I do. Because what you could do is to use a, um, a geocoded um, dash cam um, and, then, and then find a like-minded individual who would be willing to actually do the edits for you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, China is like a real problem. Like, there are a number of places like that, but Safety first, always, but then it's like, like if you can find a way, like, it's like, it's like even here, like where I was like mapping, it was like over here. Here's Camp David, which I'm sure has like, they probably don't want me to be mapping like, but like, I was just like, put my phone in my pocket, turn the GPS on, and it's like, it's like, no one knows, but it's. And then I got home or whatever, I got back to Germany or I'm here, and it's like, okay, like, whatever, and it's not, I mean, they tell me to go away or whatever, but it's... Yeah, anything, whatever, but I'm going to aerial photograph. What sort of aerial photograph has it got? Is there anything there at all? The being, being imagery has a lot, like, the like, cities of uh, rural areas, like, not so much. Yeah, the thing with the China data right now, besides the fact that there's buildings popping up like yes. mushrooms, which will be that way for decades, is that there's just roads and sometimes broad outlines, mm -hmm. but there's no points of interest mm -hmm. outside of Beijing, China. Yeah. And, and that, to me, is where OSM is most valuable. And, and where it has to be able to compete with Baidu maps and Google maps, which in China is still quite good. Uh, and then yeah. that's where you need people on the ground. You're not going to use an aerial photo to mark yeah. Yeah. Mr. Wong's mm -hmm. Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. <coughs>
No, I wonder if you were concerned about, you know, there's no road data, so I don't even know how to get from A to B. Well, I, get, I guess that, that much is available, but... That one's okay. Yeah, I, I'm an old school driver, I don't use the, the, the <laughs> GPS guidance. It's like cocaine, you can never stop. <laughs> Sorry, I've pooped already. <laughs> So like you, I just zoomed uh, into my GPS face, and then I just like draw the line, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but... For a cycleway, and there's like no way a bike's so gonna ride up this. It's only for, for pedestrians. And so I will do that. And then, and then uh, back. And up here, there's like a viewpoint there, <coughs> like a scenic uh, lookout. So then I add, uh, if I don't know like what to use, you go to like the OpenStreetMap wiki um, and their documentation. Disappeared from the map, it should be like appearing again, like soon, like sometimes it takes a minute, or like it just depends on how, how busy the servers are. But it's usually like decently fast, and sometimes you have to like refresh 
bypass for cash to get uh, like new tiles. But on routing here and this is if you wanted to ask for a foot uh, to, to walk to that viewpoint and you went near the path would it route you onto that one because you, I don't think you're connected the path onto the highway. I don't I probably shouldn't. I could do that. I should connect it with the parking lot. Yeah you're right. Number of gadgets that have like that provide maps. And like eventually, there'll be more maps and like, like Wiki Voyage and Wiki Data and other places. And the mobile app for Wikipedia, there, there are like maps and we're working on uh, like right now a lot of uh, the stuff is, like the gadgets run with uh, map tiles from the tool server, which is like if you're familiar with what's going on in the Wikimedia world, the tool server is going to go away and it's being replaced with the Wikimedia labs. And so uh, like it's like, no idea the timeline, but it's like I, like I've been poking the staff to have a Postgres, the database infrastructure set up for um, like so, so all the OSM stuff can be done on, on labs, and then Max and, and uh, um, folks or operations folks are working to have like something in production, so so like these gadgets yeah, can use it, but it is. So if you know like the little like things in the corner, this is a Thing. If you want to say anything about it. So the name is OpenStreetMap open Gadget and it shows OpenStreetMap and on top of it uh, Wikipedia coordinates and um, especially the geometry of the, of the object so you can see the red border of Berlin here and it's coming directly from, from OpenStreetMap. So it's connected uh, by a Wikipedia text inside OpenStreetMap. So is that now available on all Wikipedia as <coughs> default, or do you need to activate it somehow? The community needs to activate it, but this is three lines of code in a common JS. And is it active on English Wikipedia as well now? No, there's the uh, Wikimini Atlas. Oh, right. Which is also here, right? Community this decision. Okay. This is a mini Atlas, and I know um, like Daniel and Tim have been like, talking about like, this um, Yeah, they're making better, and they, but it's... Wikimini Atlas used now also OpenStreetMap. Zoom in more, and so you will see the buildings there. And so so it will have a kind of template to translate, to localize it in the different languages. Both tools are localized. Uh, the OpenStreetMap gadget uh, can be translated by the Translate Wiki. And for uh, translation of the Wikimini outfalls, you can send a Danish a mail or something like this. Uh, how are you doing Translate Wiki translation for the gadget? It's relatively simple. I have only uh, five or six um, words that I have to translate. And um, 
just all inside the translate wiki. And then How are you storing the translation data on the media wiki side? On the, it's, it's outside the media wiki. It's completely... No, I mean, like, how does media wiki load the translations? I use the data from translate wiki and use it in, inside my script that's running on the tool server. But it's independent from uh, media wiki. Okay. It's only an iframe inside... Uh, I, thought you meant the, the part of the, I thought you meant the part of the gadget that was running on our video game. Yep. Okay, so, um, you contacted him endlessly, and uh, Daniel, uh, who, who made the mini atlas, is also around, not here, but around. So you can talk to them about, about this. Is there any way to upload, to bulk upload? Upload multiple tweets at the same time. If I have several according to my, you have the set of coordinates of different locations, and I have to upload, I have to upload at the same time. Is there any tool available? Yeah. It's complicated because, uh, in, a, in a, like, there are, like, I don't know, like, you can use the JAS and it can handle a lot, or, like, to, or you can use a script or write a script. To up the the um, technical part tends to be a little bit easier. The harder part is uh, just like you're supposed to talk to the community and see, okay, like, well, like, what is this data? Is it uh, like, I don't know. I mean, sometimes people propose stuff and it's like inappropriate or like for legal reasons, that's not. Other than the, other than the community part, is there anything? Is there any two level? I know this is uh, data is accurate and. I get to the range in legal way. Okay. In that case. Okay. So I want to ask all these data accurate and I have the needed information like what is what type of space is and what is also and other type tweets and I put, I want to upload this at the same time. I, or I would say the technical aspect is relatively easy. You need only an XML file and you can include this in your editor and then you can prove it again and then upload it. There, there are tools to convert right. like shape files to exactly. some format, and then you would use like JSON or a script to upload it. But it's just I don't know, like if the map uh, or like match like whatever the tags are in your data, whatever the information is with the tag in OpenStreetMap. So in like most cases, there's no just like push the button. This is automatic. It's like you have to like like um. Like convert it to OSM and then use like JSON or use a script to, to do that. And normally you have more complex things than only a list of points. Yeah. Normally you have uh, borders of districts and relations about it, and so it's not so completely easy, but the tools are relatively easy. Yeah, there's a lot of examples. Once you've like contributed or not, or doesn't matter. Like you have this open street map thing, and you want to use it now. Yeah, 
so it's here. So I'm going to uh, uh, download a PMG or SVG or, or whatever, like the MSB, um, um, like the style that OpenStreetMap provides. So that's the easiest way to prefer That's the easiest way if like, you think, okay, the style is ugly, like I want to make my own style or whatever, like the then like you can download the data and, and do your own app, which I was going to show you. Because there is no dynamic inclusion like the Puma maps. Not yet, but I think once there's production quality and uh, scalable uh, tiles, that like that might be possible someday. So if you want to get data, it's if you're like super, I don't know, like super like in the OpenStreetMap and technical and want to like work with like all of the data, you can download all of the data from OpenStreetMap. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I mean, you can do like cool, cool stuff with that, but if you just want like a certain area for like, okay, I want to put this on my GPS or I want to like just make a map of a small, area and I don't need like the whole planet, then you go to uh, like uh, it's like these people have provided a service where they cut up like the open street map data and uh, like it's either by country or depending on like the country by state or like uh, area or by city and then you can get like the data just for like that area and then it's like much like quicker and easier to download and like deal with the data. You can also export uh, an interactive map from OpenStreetMap directly yeah. and HTML yeah, and an iframe inside your blog or something. No problem is copyright. No, no. Yeah, it's everything fun. included and correct. That's the big advantage of OpenStreetMap over Google Maps because you can also embed a Google Map into your website but you've got copyright issues then. But if you use OpenStreetMap, then you're safe. Um, well, Google Maps are also not free. Yeah, not free. Mm -hmm. definitely not, not, free. not free. Not free. Also, is have a price. Neither, right. neither free nor free. gratis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I want to uh, like for Germany, like you can choose a format. Like if you want to uh, load this data into like Postgres and then work with the database, you can choose uh, the. Uh, Photo buff format or the, the, this one, if you just want like shape files, which are the like, easiest to use, but like, like it's more processed. But like, I'll, I'll use shape, shape files in this case. So, um, or I've already downloaded Berlin, so like, for nice, let's get that. And then, We're going to use uh, this tool called Tileno, which is developed by a company called uh, Development Seed or Mapbox, now, they're now called Mapbox, uh, in DC. And it uses uh, like, uh, Node.js, but the, you can download this to your like, Mac, Windows, or whatever you use, and then use this offline to make your own maps. And it's like, so much easier than uh, like, the old way. So I have downloaded it. kinds of maps with this. You can do, um, it doesn't have to be open street map. You can use, uh, there's another source of data called uh, natural, natural Earth uh, Data that is, uh, that was developed or created by uh, journalists like, and other people 
you want to just like, like they have to make maps quickly and they uh, like like care about like that it's beautiful and all that and it's uh, so, so they just wanted a like a simple data set like that uh, that it's uh, I think it's public domain it is, uh, and uh, it's uh, like it's public, it's public domain but they only provide maps for small scale maps right so if you want like maps of uh, like you want to make a map of all the countries and color and color and then like based on some statistics or of states or like rivers or I don't know but it's not meant for like street level but if like for a lot of like purposes on Wikipedia like that's like a good uh, source to start with and then when you zoom in and then you want to you want like the streets and all that, and then then you want like open street map. So uh, and I'm not like or, let's see, like how do you start? So it comes with some uh, like sample projects. So like this one is like a sample that they provided, and, and so. show you like what I was playing with and I'm not talented when it comes to design so, so and I just like worked on it today so it's heavy but um I uh Choose a color. Um, it's like this one. Just choose some color, and then uh, like it saved it already. And can people see this, or do I need to make it even bigger? Bigger, a little bigger. Okay. Now do you have to do that in every zoom level? So if you zoom in on this one, do you have to change it again for can you um, I I should go to another equal I see now, sorry. This is as big as I can make it. Like, so like here I define like in the in the table <coughs> here has a has 
a calling called types, and then I, I can choose uh, like if I want like cemetery or uh, construction or, or something else. And then like in the CSS, it's uh, called a Carto CSS. I define a type equals uh, whatever like is in the up here. Or I could use name, or I could use any any uh, fields in the in the data, and so like that filters the whole whole like table down to just the uh, parts, and then and then here I, I choose uh, like I want this this color to apply, or I want the parts just to appear on zoom level ten and higher, so I can choose that, and I can say maybe okay on a I put something below it, it's like the order is important, the order you need to find things. So do parts. Zoom. information on how to do everything. So um, here and you can also split up the styles into like different style sheets and then I have one for water. So this just allows me to organize things. Like, if you make like a style sheet it's complicated at best I think I'm gonna run out of power so Some uh, you often have, uh, let's say, one fairly small building, especially in Hong Kong, with many, many shops and restaurants, and then on the default rendering engine, uh, it automatically sort of chooses random locations, random places yeah. in a fairly low density, and just puts them. So it might be the least important shops in the same building. Yeah. So is there a way to like to set priorities or somehow? There are, there are, like that's like. Uh, like the default style, that's obviously not its strength, it's not good at that. But I'm not sure with like this, like if you can do your own custom one or, or someone's probably already done it, but like to do a custom rendering, it's like it works better for like this kind of place. And as well as 3D mapping, and that's still like something that's like kind of a. I'm not sure, like I tried the. Uh, like, um, in Washington, I tried like mapping the airport when I had like 
hour to fill for like my bags to arrive late, late, late. So I was like, oh, I'm walking on the airport and mapping, and I'm okay, what's like, this is on the baggage claim level, and then this is on the, the arrival level, or, or, or like, the ticketing, or whatever. And it was it's a little bit hard to like, like define the levels, but like, the, like it can be done, or I can make up my own tags. Tagging scheme to do that, and then and then like, like use the data uh, with my own tools like this, and then, then make it work. But by the default, it's still like one of the challenges. I mean, mapping a mall is very difficult if you want to put all the shops. If it's a three level mall and you've got lots of shops, it's, yeah. it's yeah. quite nasty. People have tried, and like, I've tried, and it's like. Yeah. But as soon as you start to order shops, that will be all the optimizers from outside, yeah. because their shop has to be on top. <laughs> <laughs> I said here, like, I did more, like, if you zoom in, zoom in, and then, like, I put in some labels of, like, neighborhoods, and added the buildings, and, and, <coughs> and stuff, and if you zoom in a, a lot, And then added some points, and there's a like icon sets. This one's called Mac E. It's like documented on tile mill, but like you can use this tile or this icon set as a base like to do stuff. So it has like restaurants, or you can make them like markers with round circles, or like come up with your own like icon or, or whatever. But So far, and then the map becomes too busy, so I get rid of stuff. <coughs> so let me show you this other one. But the uh, question: Can you export uh, a, Google, uh, a map as an SVG file? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. So, like this one, uh, I'm using the national data of the, all, all the countries. And then, like, oh, you the, have a rendered in box. What? <laughs> yeah, there's probably a problem with the, the like, uh, I can uh, not have, like, Antarctica not in my map. <laughs> it's like, because it's like, but, uh, so here it's, uh, uh, like, the natural earth data, like it comes with a few, a few um, like, uh, uh, like columns of data. So it has a GDP, estimated uh, GDP per country, and it has population. So I can use that to uh, uh, color the map based on uh, like that like statistic. And like Tylenol, there maybe there's a plugin out there, like a tool for doing uh, these kind of maps in an easier way, but like I couldn't find one like right now. So what I do is uh, it's back to my like this trusty old, older but so awesome mapping tool called QGIS, which is uh, like more like, you can do analysis and other stuff with it. So then I use this, this as a stuff for classifying and coloring data. So then it, it can like this one. And then you could just use this and not use tile mill at all for this kind of map, where you can put the shape files in here from MSM and, and do stuff here. That's also like pretty easy. So then
that's why then I have to choose uh, what column to use. That's why. And so then I, I just like took these values and then the Wikipedia of, of the Commons, and eventually with, uh, like with Wikidata, then it uh, might be possible, and with the map stuff that's like being worked on, to uh, like make this a little more automated, where it's like, and I don't know, maybe make use of the stuff that Kyle Miller is doing, to like maybe like tie the statistics rather than hard coding it, tying it to the like Wikipedia items, and then being able to like classify and color and make these cool statistical maps based on like Wikipedia or something else. I can see that like happening someday. Like maybe not so far away, like, like what maybe match next Wikimedia. I don't know, but like, I can see like this being a lot easier to do, but it's. Uh, Right now it is, like, it's 5.30, so I will take a few questions. Question about camp? Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is kind of on a different note, but uh, I know last time I checked, uh, the main OpenStreetMap website didn't have any kind of direction, <laughs> but there were other places are... you can go to get them. Uh, so two questions. One, do they have any plans to add that on the main site? And two, what do you think the best place is that does offer that? I would say, like, no plans as I know, but, like, they've been uh, actively working the stuff, like, the stuff like this whole thing is, like, brand new. It's been here, like, a month, less than a month. It's, like, they're redesigning stuff to, to make uh, things nicer. So, um, like... I wouldn't say like no, but it's like that's a complicated thing and we're gonna sign up soon, but there's after an ongoing donation by um, you know, OpenStreetMap and one of the things that they're planning to have uh, purchase is maybe a routing server. A routing server? Yes. Um, do you know that um, Nick Roots from South Africa actually had a routing a routing um, uh, a test that was running for quite a while on dev.openstreetmap.com and it worked quite well. It was based on the on the Cosmo um, engine, but he stopped development on that one because he had to um, uh, had to work on real work, which I don't money. But yeah. okay, so this one might have. I'm not sure if this one. This one has a. I'm not sure if this one has a. But I mean, there are, there are like like sites and tools that do that. But um, yeah, I mean, I I've tried. Like, uh, I just haven't used it that that much. I should use use of some for my routing. I've tried a uh, MapQuest open a little bit, but I don't know if that's the best one out there. I'm not sure. It's probably like, okay. I mean, if you want to use it on mobile devices, um, uh, um, 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 the one that I use is, and I'm trying to remember the name right now, Osman. Uh, Osman, yeah, yeah, Osman. Um, Navitis, um, but 
Gosmore used to have excellent search, and Navit and, and Osmat have really bad search facilities compared to Gosmore, but Gosmore is now not in development anymore. So if anyone's involved with the development of those things, you should look at the search facilities of Gosmore. Just saying, just putting it out there. Yeah. My question is very off topic, I'm sorry. Uh, is that possible that there is a disagreement between two editors, two mappers? on something, like you, you add something, I, I think it's not correct, and I want to change it. And then if it happens, what's the protocol to resolve it? Uh, could you repeat? It's like an edit war. Mm -hmm. Edit wars. Oh, I mean, that happened, though. Like, it's a lot more rare than Wikipedia, unfortunately, but like, I know there was a case with them. Um, well, like, there's a, like, in a OSM, there's a, a, like, tag on name, and then you can do language-specific tags, like name colon yan, name colon hd for Hebrew, but the name one is, like, the one that, like, tends to get rendered. And so, um, in the case of Jerusalem, people kept arguing whether it should be, like, like, like Kapuz in, in Arabic, or it should be written in Hebrew, and they kept arguing, and then, and within the OSM Foundation, there's, like, a data working group that, like, in the, these rare cases will help uh, mediate. So, in the end, they, they mediated and decided, okay, we're going to write it in English, not, like, neither Hebrew or Arabic. So, what the decision was, when like, in those rare cases, like, it can be arbitrated, but, like, fortunately, it's, like, a lot more rare than Wikipedia. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, and so the resolution uh, of the conflict happens within the community. There are talk pages like the community. No, like, there are like, like discussion forums, I think it's where a mailing list. That's, that's bad. But like, they tried to talk to each other and then like, still couldn't agree, so then, then like. I think the first um, documented case about edit for an open street map was in the case of Cyprus. As you may know, there's uh, two uh, sovereign governments in Cyprus. One's the Greek and the other one's Turkish. So they were, uh, they were arguing, arguing about whether what to name the settlements in northern Cyprus, whether you should use Greek names or the Turkish names. And one of the early policies that was, that was developed for Open Street Map was to use the on the ground rule. He used the name of he used the name of what the people living in that area are using. So that's uh, one of the early case, uh, one of the ways where we resolve conflicts. We use what the people actually living there use. But that uh, she mentioned the she mentioned the Jerusalem conflict. That's a little bit more. That's just the one that I know about. That's a problem because you have Palestinians and. Israelis living in Jerusalem. So. Interestingly, I also noticed this might be one of the first edit words on Wikipedia that I saw that like, somebody was like changing. I don't know. Like, but like, I'm not surprised. Like, I'm not if, if the conflicts are coming from the different languages, I must say that uh, we have now, with the help of uh, Wikimedia Germany, now multilingual maps, and I hope we can include this now in, in the Wikipedia somehow. So, so that uh, the, the user can decide it, what uh, language you want to see, that not only one language exists or one, one map exists. Alright, so it is 5.30, so like, I know there are like, going to be some meetups going on, including an uh, open street map camping party, if you want to go outside and go back in. Um, like, the area that I like, chose is, uh, like, I can you bring up the uh, open street map again? So between walking here and, and like, the hotel is just, so it's like, it's like 10 minutes walking around, the, like to get there, it's under the covered walkway, so, so it's like not that hot. And then it's not like that crowded, it's like, it would be like doable. And there's like nothing, like all the restaurants and shops are like Are the walkways themselves mapped as pedestrian paths? They are. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mapped like a really obscure like staircase in Pennsylvania. So even if you're
want to just walk back to the hotel with us. I'm sure I could probably, like, I don't know, like, share my Wi-Fi, like, at the hotel, and, like, maybe, like, we could do, like, the, like, editing or data there or, uh, like, somewhere over there. Or if people want to come back here, I'm sure, like, we could do that also. We have the bus, well the bus is going to come from here, exactly. so maybe we should come back here for those who are going back to the dorm. Sure. What time do they go back? The bus will be leaving at uh, 5.45. Okay. 5.45? Yes. That's not a lot of time. What do we do? That's not a lot of time. Well, it's, it is doable to um, travel back to the dorm on your own through public transport. So maybe we can even do a... Uh, 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 Orwood Street Metro to that place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, for, I mean, like, I, I got these, like, walking papers, but it's just as easy to, like, like choose one of the hats and then, like, use the hat. Like, that's more what I'm doing now nowadays. But if anyone's interested, they if it's too hot, that's fine also. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Everything's so brutal. Like, what a way to say. And then they have the covered walkways and Sky 100, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. So they have a little land space, so they have to go somewhere. Yeah. There's like a, one of those covered walkways, it goes like directly into the Yeah, it's central. You could walk you know, a mile, you know, you know, it's just connected. You can get from one to the is it up in center or like on the island? I don't know. 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 I'm <laughs> <laughs>